Hello and welcome back to CC Institutors and I'm continuing playing, oh starting, sorry, starting playing The Testament of Sherlock Holmes. This was released in 2012 on Windows, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And uh, yeah, this is the fourth game after the Jack the Ripper. Uh, I agree, I played this, I had to remove my older saves, apparently they were in the cloud, so yeah, I realized that I played this last time, 2013. Um, honors, actually, I do have every achievement, but apparently the honors was taken away because I removed the saves. So they are tied to the saves, but the achievement still stays. I did have everything. So anyways, that's that's what <laughs> that's interesting. I uh, was a little um, miffed when I checked the honors and see that they were empty after I removed the saves. But, uh, yes, um, sorry, I might hit the mic. Uh, I can't really remember much about this game, at least for now. Probably it will come back when I'm starting to play. I have a vague re recollection that Sherlock has to go hiding or something like that. Or then I'm misremembering, but we will see it. Um, what the GOG and Steam say, which you can buy it from uh, either one. Uh, I I bought it this way, way, way back when from Steam, but you can get it on GOG also. And um, yeah, what does it say? Uh, suspected in case of evil will theft, fraud and double crossing, Sherlock Holmes will undergo descent into the hell in what will doubtless see become one of his most thrilling cases yet. So n that really didn't help us at all. So I have no idea. The best thing is to go in and i do apologize i had a little uh, break bef after jack the ripper i was going to upload as soon as the jack the ripper ended this but uh real life issues oh i hate when those happen and i couldn't be home recording hopefully i can keep up the pace as a w one per day but i'll have to warn uh, about that that there might be few off days. Uh, I might have a little bit uh, business to attend to next week, so that might cause a problem with uploading, but I try my best. Anyways, unless something technical-wise happens, I will definitely continue to play this, because I had to check if there is the stuttering problem, and there might be. And then there were some uh, little flashing weird thing is yeah i took a uh, one of the older saves and tried to see how this works and um apparently there has been a problem with the saves in whitechapel area apparently we are going back to there so there was recommended to take uh i can't remember four gigabytes uh configurator and uh run it through the sherlock holmes xso doesn't crash when you try to save in the white chapel because apparently it can cause crashes in the white chapel yes i don't know if there is stuttering hopefully there is not that much uh, brightness should be okay apparently the in-game brightness gamma settings doesn't help at all when recording so if i chase this nothing happens on the recording side it happens to me but not for you so hopefully i have set that up and also there is difficulty. I have no idea what that means. There's hard and normal. If I think hard and normal. I keep normal. I have no idea where it affects, if at all. And I couldn't find out anything about it. Maybe I should actually check the manual, but I don't. So I go with the normal. Anyways, I think we blabbed enough. So let's jump in. New game. Yes.
Yeah, it's a horsey. So what's in a home stall? Weird start, I have no idea what's happening. with a treasure map. No, I don't think so. I wish that I had seen through all your lies. Oh, start from the beginning, not the middle. Good advice. And Dude. so I decided to pick up my pen to relate the most disturbing episode of my life thus far. It all began early one morning in 1898, when Sherlock Holmes invited me to accompany him on a visit to the Marquis of Conningham. Watson, my dear fellow, we can now go and inform the Marquis that we have found the Samoan necklace, and very much faster than Inspector Baines, too, which pleases me. Have you really solved the theft, Holmes? And so quickly? I have indeed, Watson. And believe me, it was completely unnecessary to spread out all over London, as our friend Baines thought was best. He likes to boast that his methods are equal to mine, but once again the outcome has contradicted him. After all these years of accompanying you upon your investigations, I thought that by now I should be reasonably capable of following your train of thought. But in this particular case, I must admit that I don't understand anything at all. Ah, you see, but you do not observe, Watson. There lies the difference. It is a matter of course. A matter of course? In the middle of the night, when everyone is fast asleep, the service bell within that room rings out and alerts the servants. They dress quickly and come running. But the door is locked and there is a strong smell of burning from within. A few seconds later, the master of the house himself, the robbed marchioness's husband, the Marquis of Conningham, arrives and unlocks the door using the sole key. A fire has started inside the room, but they have managed to arrive in time to put it out. It is at that moment that the Marquis realizes that the famous Samoan necklace, which had been safe within its glass cabinet only a few hours earlier, has now disappeared. In order to explain, let us confirm my theory before the arrival of Inspector Baines. Okay, I think it's time for the tutorial. I will play from the first person view. I usually play these games. Oh, by the way, you can use controller with this if I remember correctly. Look around, you use mouse. To walk, desired, desired. W A S D. Look at the broken showcase and click on it. There it is, the last place where you look at it. This window was cut with a diamond, a clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. Yes, always interact with left mouse button. After a clue is examined, the icon will turn green. Please move Sherlock Holmes near the left window. You should see two clue icons simultaneously. Left window. I have to say it's... Uh, I don't know if they use the same base engine, but with 
much refined or is this a completely new engine again i'm still um don't know why the stuttering i tried everything a mark undoubtedly made by a diamond someone tried to cut the glass but he was interrupted therefore the thief tried to escape through the window but he was interrupted question is is the inside or outside cut turn the examination mode with multi zone press left mother you can switch cursor between items by using a mark undoubt therefore all the windows are locked they've not been forced go to the chimney you will see the hand icon yes interesting anything else let's check the control so w s a d move it Return action, probably the same as the left. Capsule lock, alternate will be running. Run, tur first turbo, sixth sense. Mm, inventory dialers, okay. So, am I correct if I. Well, we. Oh, we still have the knife, pocket knife, and the matches. Uh, chimney, okay, let's go to the chimney. Let's do all the things that you want to do it. I have no idea how this works, the sixth sense. Oh, magnifying glass. Yep, okay. You can open <clears throat> You can open your inventory by clicking the right mouse button while playing. You can always activate any of your items from your inventory by rolling their central wheel of your mouse. Yes, magnifying glass and yeah, it works as it has uh, already so near the piano some music scores are on the floor you can activate an item by selecting it in your okay scores of piano let us examine the crumpled scores that have fallen off the piano let's let's look at the clues um. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I was looking on the left corner because there it was usually. It's it sticks on the lower corner. Uh, interesting. I think I played the controller with the last time, so no. Uh, oh, it's a little print. I'm guessing monkey. These sooty prints were left by a tiny hand. I don't understand why these music scores are covered with soot. Because the monkey ended from the chimney. So this is the third person and this is the... Oh. Oh, you, you can... Oh, okay. I'll still go. To make character move faster, press and hold shift. By pressing space, you activate Sherlock Holmes' sixth sense. It will show you hint not discovered yet. You can now search other clues in the room. Thank you. We have fishes. At least... Oh. One dead fish. I don't know what that noise is. Not very well kept, this aquarium. I can see a dead fish floating on the surface. Yes. Definitely a dead fish in the water let's go and check the chimney footprints you are not going to get on your knees to examine them there is no need it is soot the servants must have trodden in it while they were putting out the fire mm. the fire started here just beneath the bell pull whoever pulled the cord would have had his feet in the fire unless it was pulled before the fire started mm. strange there are some objects here that have been knocked over. Yes, very strange. And Heading towards his chosen escape route, probably the window, the thief knocked over the stool, which then caught fire. But why didn't he try to put the fire out at once? Uh, probably he didn't need to. Let's check the inventory. So we have inventory. We have uh, the Marquis Music Room Stolen Dowry. Uh, 
and also something a deduction board like check there this menu is not available and yes the achievements okay there is something this draft screen makes an ideal hiding place as the theft was committed at night, I conclude that the thief hid himself behind the draft screen and waited until he was alone in the room. Hmm, that would make sense. That would definitely make a sense. Make a sense. I don't know. I don't know. That is a similar tree to the Awaken. A little bit better looking, but yes, definitely a lemon tree. Strange. There aren't any prints. Yet I'm sure that the thief hid here. Yes. Okay, um, I'm almost certain that I played this with the control. Oh, there's something over there. Uh, a candle. It must have fallen from the chandelier. So somebody has been in the chandelier. Again, I'm to make character move. Yes, I know. Thank you. Don't. When the servants arrived at the door, having been alerted by the bell, they saw evidence of the theft and the fire. But they didn't see the thief. This door is very hard to force. The Marquis is the only person to have the key. The thief could not get out through here until eventually when the door was opened by the servants. Ah, Mr. Holmes, you're already here. Good morning, Inspector. You've arrived just in time. <laughs> Scotland Yard arrives like the cavalry, always in the nick of time. Ah, but I know that satisfied expression, Mr. Holmes. Have you already solved the case? I think I would it's like... possible. We have retraced the thief's rather unusual footsteps. He is a true acrobat. But what I cannot understand is that when the servants entered the room, there was no one to be seen. An acrobat, perhaps, but an invisible one? <laughs> I do not think so. The only explanation is that the thief escaped before the servants arrived. I don't know how, but there is no other way. Half a point for the doctor, nil for the inspector. I am pleased to see that you find the situation amusing, Mr. Holmes. Very well, then. Explain. Dr. Watson was correct when he mentioned acrobatics, but he is mistaken about the nature of the acrobat. As for you, Baines, you're quite incorrect, as the thief was in the room when the servants entered. Explain, for heaven's sake, Mr. Holmes. Watson, how could a thief be missed in the middle of eight men? I don't know. Because he is very small? Stop teasing us, Holmes. Exactly. Because he is small. Small and remarkably agile. You're thinking of a monkey? And a trained monkey at that. Without a doubt, a Leontopicathus rosalia from Central America. The animal had been hidden inside the room for several hours, calmly awaiting the signal from his master. Once night had fallen and the room was empty, a high-frequency whistle alerted the monkey that it was time to begin the procedure for which he had been trained. The monkey emerged from his hiding place and used the point of a diamond to open the glass cabinet and steal the necklace. He headed across to the window by the chimney, but knocked over the stool, which in turn knocked aside the fire guard and started the fire. The frightened monkey jumped from the chimney by swinging from the bell pull, thus alerting the house servants. He then went to the window and began to use his diamond to cut a hole, but was interrupted by the staff trying to gain entry via the door, and he panicked again. He ran across the piano, scattering the music scores onto the floor, before hiding inside the chandelier, knocking over a candle. Finally, the servants and the Marquis entered the room, leaving the door open while they put out the fire. It was during the confusion that our agile little thief made his escape through the doorway. As simple as that. A brilliant explanation! Bravo, Holmes! And the necklace? I can see it from here, my friends. It's right in front of us. We have searched the room from top to bottom, Holmes. How were we unable to find it? because we paid insufficient attention to the only victim of this affair. What victim? No one is dead? Yes, Watson. A poor goldfish, whose destiny was to die 
crushed by one of the most precious necklaces in England. The aquarium is just beneath the chandelier, I understand. The little monkey had likely hung the necklace around its neck and lost it when he leapt from the chandelier. The jewels fell into the aquarium where they remain now. Marquis, here is your necklace, intact, just a little wet. Mr. Holmes, this brilliant demonstration does credit to your reputation. Thank you so much, Marquis. Do you wish to verify the authenticity of your jewel? No, I recognize it. I have spent many hours admiring it, you know. Good. I will return it to its box and... Inspector, a bank has just been held up. You must follow me at once. Orders of Scotland Yard. What times? Sirs... Duty calls. My regards, Marquis. And well done again, Mr. Holmes. There, the necklace is in its box. We've lost enough time here. Let's go home, Watson. Ah, very well, as you wish. A good day to you, Marquis. With pleasure, gentlemen. And once again, thank you. Okay, that was interesting tutorial part. And now we are back in the apartment. What's next? Mmm, coffee. This morning's newspaper. Holmes, have you read this article about you? No, Watson, not yet, and I won't have time to. Read it before you leave. It's outrageous. If you insist. Okay, I'll make a save. Oh, does it make auto saves also because or did i save <laughs> anyways uh, yeah, that's, uh, definitely similar nothing really have changed except of course everything looks a little bit prettier and yes, there might be a little bit stutter. I'll try to keep the movement as smooth as I can. Okay. Same pictures we have already seen. There's the handsome pigeons. People on the streets. Usually it's uh, empty. Uh, violin. Deer hunter hat. Bust of a Sherlock Holmes, I guess. And interesting thing is that we haven't seen the uh, Cthulhu statue after. Okay, can I actually graphic sound subtitles? Hmm. Apparently I can't uh, remove that familiar table. Let's see if we have to use it on this game. Again, more carriages. To be honest, I don't think I can go to the streets. I'm almost positive. At least not for now. Ooh, there's a... You can see the... A reflection. What do we have here? Uh, the Strand mag mag magazine. I, I can't even speak again. Nothing terribly interesting. By the way, oh yeah, I can open the inventory on my right. Uh, this menu is not available. Okay. So, there's nothing left to do except take the paper from Watson. Sherlock Holmes at the home of the Marquis of Cunningham. The investigation is 
fiasco. Yesterday, the celebrated detective Sherlock Holmes was invited to the manor of the Marquis of Cunningham to supply his conclusion. Following his investigation into the disappearance of the priceless Samuel Nicholas, it should be recalled that the lady called in the detective after the police appeared flummoxed in the face of astonished, astonishing circumstances surrounding the theft. Indeed, the valuable piece of jewelry disappeared while the door to the room in which it was displayed was locked. The alarm was raised by the servants, alerted by a room service bell ringing out during the night. When the Marquis, the only person in possession of the key, opened the door, everyone rushed in to extinguish the fire that had started, before it was noticed that the, ne the necklace had mysteriously vanished. The most ast astonishing factor is that no thief was found within the room, and all the exits were closed. As usual, Mr. Holmes resolved the case in the twinkling of an eye, and the jewel, re jewel was recovered. I will not waste my time on the various explanation as to the disappearance because I, could, I would prefer to draw your attention, dear readers, to the last surprising development in the case. Developments in the case. Following the departure of Sherlock Holmes, who placed the necklace in the safe himself, the Marquis noticed that the jewel was nothing but a poor copy of the original. Let it not be forgotten that the Samoan necklace, although plain and without ornament, is unique because of the rarity of its pearls. Pearls which are found only in the small parts of the lagoon of the archipelago, of the same name, <laughs> sorry, and to which scientists attribute their exceptional quality to the strong density of crystal of aragonite that they are made of. The priceless necklace, uh, brought here at the beginning of the century by Lord Fendon Orwick, the Marquis' grandfather and an eminent explorer, should have been part of her daughter's dowry for her marriage to the Duke of Newcastle. So I am going to place a simple question. Should we not, in all open-mindedness, ask ourselves if the necklace was not simply and deliberately exchanged for a fake by Mr. Holmes himself? I am aware, dear readers, that the brutality of this question without any pre preconceptions may certainly shock some of you. But the facts are there are but the, but the facts are there, and our thoughts and judgments should not be confused with the record which we shall all share <laughs> regard which we all share for the famous detective. It is not the first time that the Globe Explorer has expressed its reservation as to Sherlock Holmes' methods. Do not forget our counter-investigation into the escape of Arsène Lupin, the Frenchman who took malign pleasure in tarnishing the image of our royal family and who by lucky chance managed to elude the capture by Mr. Holmes. At the time, we did not hesitate to consider the attacked complicity on the part of the latter. For those who are familiar with Mrs. Mr. Holmes, it's quite apparent that his character traits show more of the opportunist and brilliant usurper than that of altruistic defender of the law. I would draw the attention of our readers to the suggestion that the description of this gentleman provided by his friend Dr. John Watson through his stories is a long way from the truth. Indeed, his behavior is the derisive, contemptuous, haughty, and offensive towards the police, and in particular towards Inspector Baines, replacing Inspector Lestrade, who is currently convalescent. And an habitual abuser of narcotics such as heroin and cocaine, this is why, dear readers, it is important to disregard Sherlock Holmes' good reputation in order to form an objective opinion and to ask the pertinent questions. Was the necklace that Holmes found already a fake? If that was the case, why did he not mention it, and why should he insist on placing it back within the safe himself? Has the detective some unsavory interest in this affair, or is it simple case of deceit in order to steal the extraordinary summer necklace? It is up to you, dear readers, to form your own opinions, but you can count upon our, your humble servant to continue revealing to the public the doubtful methods and motivation of one who in the future I shall not hesitate to call Sherlock Holmes the usurper. To be continued, O oh, Farley. Oh. An ancestry of Prince Woodville recognized. Lords of committees set up an order to verify Prince Woodwell's legitimacy, legitimacy made in conclusion public last night. Title was confirmed. Hmm. 
uh, the prince would have abandoned any claim to the inheritance of the present royal family as well as any political activity. Young man, now age 28, read history and law at Oxford with diploma in philosophy. Uh, for those who might think this is a handicap on integ integrating into the British high society, let me remind you that he is an also outstanding on the polo field. Yes, that's important. He is outstanding in polo field and plays the bagpipes quite beautifully. Finally, we should add that lately he has become actively involved in charity work and aiding the poor. J.B. Good. Johnny B. Good. Okay. Prince Woodville, French culinary expert and bagpipe player, might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. You know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound to follow. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Come in, Inspector Baines. The door's open. Ah, Mr. Holmes. How did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second-to-last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Have you read that, Rag? Yes. Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? I don't know how the reporter got hold of the information, but it's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. Holmes. The necklace is a forgery? Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer, well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house, Holmes. I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. It is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's souffles. Let us leave the police to solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in hand. Perhaps you are right, Holmes. So can I talk about the necklace now? Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed. They would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. Why? But let's go, Marchioness. And the Marchioness? She is beside herself. Without the necklace, her marriage is compromised. It is the principal item of the young woman's dowry. What a lovely marriage. So let's examine the necklace. Holmes, forgive me for insisting. But don't you want to examine the fake jewellery? Watson, I have an appointment, and it's out of the question that I arrive late. It will only take you a couple of minutes. You really must quell the suspicions put forward in this appalling article. If you will allow me, Inspector? Be my guest. Very well. Okay. Uh, oh, it's right over there. You're still staring quite a lot. So, find out if the necklace is authentic or not. We can... R oh, <laughs> interesting rotation. Definitely interesting rotation. Can, how much I can rotate? I, quite a lot, actually. What is sixth sense? Uh, instructions, close, quit. Um... Are those uh, fake? These three pearls are of poor quality. Okay. I'm guessing this This two. pearl is a different color. And that's a different size. Wh who would put the different size pearl on here? This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. Too many defects. This necklace is a fake. This is nothing but a vulgar copy. And at a glance, it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Yes, how is it possible? Holmes, do you have a theory about this? 
I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Holmes. You may accompany me, Watson, if you care to do so. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll keep you informed as to my inquiries. Please do. Goodbye, Inspector. You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? <laughs> All right, Holmes. Ah, you control Dr. Watson. Always I have to get the uh, uh, map of London. I was thinking something. Knight Knightsbridge, uh, that's uh, from... Wait, what? Toby. Oh, do we... Is this the first Sherlock Holmes where we need to control dog? The work table, where Holmes analyzes things. Maybe. I'll check the areas. Well, to be honest, I don't think I need to. Uh, Knightsbridge, yeah, I think it's... Um, there's a book about it, uh, Plus of the Earth. And uh, there's also a game about it. I think I have it. I probably should play it sometimes. It's um, about Knightsbridge Cathedral. Of course. But there's I the map. I have found your map. So, and now we can go Diocese of Knightsbridge. Because why not? The police. Already? How did you know? May we see the Bishop of Knightsbridge? Yes. Yes, of course. But come in. What has happened, Reverend? What? I... I don't know. It was last night, I think. I only just arrived, and I have made this macabre discovery. My God. How horrible. I haven't called anyone. How did you know that? Holmes, look! The bishop, appallingly mutilated. How dreadful. Mutilated and killed. He was such a good man. How could anyone be so brutal? Look at him. He is barely recognizable now. How could any of God's children be responsible for that? They were evidently unworthy children, Reverend. Now do please try to calm yourself and focus, because we will need your assistance. Do you have any idea as to the motive behind this? I haven't had time to do an inventory, but nothing appears to have been stolen. And anyway, His Excellency didn't own anything of great value. I don't know what else I can tell you. Note this down, please, Doctor. Doctor? But you aren't the police? No, Reverend. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We are here at the request of the Bishop. In that case, I must ask you to leave, and not to touch anything. I must get in touch with the authorities without further delay. Uh, Reverend, when the inspectors of Scotland Yard find themselves at a dead end, which they quite often do, I assure you, then they turn to me for help. If you will allow us to continue our investigation, then you shall have the answers to all of your questions. Out of the question! I don't even know you! I'm going to call the police, whether you like it or not. It would be better for everyone, Reverend, if you kept your temper. Watson, are you taking notes? This affair promises to be a complex one, therefore we must not overlook the slightest detail. Yes, Holmes. I am keeping a meticulous set of notes. I have created a very clever deduction board. One thing we can be sure of at the moment is that this crime was not for gain. The Reverend has informed us that nothing valuable was stolen, and indeed it would seem that the Bishop had nothing of any worth to take. Very good, Watson. Do continue. Okay, back to the dedu deduction board. Um, wealth. The bishop didn't own anything of value, not even his in his safe. Okay. Uh, great. Oh, deduction of Knightsbridge. Okay. I didn't remember there's uh, some gruesome mur murders around. Cut finger. Um, broken fingers. Mutilation. Let's check the body first. Oh, lovely. 
The fingers have been crushed and violently struck. Yummy. And ropes. His forearms have been ripped. Pieces of skin have been torn off. What do you think, Watson? I'd say that he was eaten alive. Yet I've noticed a curious degeneration of the skin tissue around the wounds. Noted, noted, and... A piece of rope that was used to tie up that poor man. Okay. Uh, so we probably have checked everything from here. Oh. His stomach is covered in scratches. Quite evidently, they weren't made recently. So, these wounds were not made by his murderers. Oh, is that the um, uh, self... Well, I can't remember the proper English name, but the uh, pinnons made by when you wound yourself. Uh, with different things. Um, uh, whipping or using uh, coarse hair uh, a shirt that with which rubs your skin and irritates and uh, causes discomfort and a little bit pain and whatnot uh, basically self penance by true pain and what else uh, the fingers have been crushed and violently struck. Somebody really wanted to break his fingers, but why? What else? Have I searched everything from here? I guess I have. So can I check the... Okay, yeah, definitely it works like the earlier one. If you have checked everything you need from the certain area, it shows it as a green. So let's check the foot. Feet. Ugh. These burns are terrible. They are. Uh, second degree, at least, probably also third. His feet have been burned. Hmm. My first impression is that he wears a size 9 shoe. You? But what does it matter, Holmes? Who knows yet? It's always the size 9. What is that? I can't check that from here. Ropes. This poor man was tied just below the knees. To stop him from walking, certainly, but mostly to free his feet. My God, Holmes, this man was horribly tortured. Yes, that's a fair assessment if we are looking what has been done to this poor man. At least poor for now, who knows what he had done. And... A finger. Apparently, it doesn't belong to the Bishop of Knightsbridge. That, How dreadful! That is actually true, because, yeah, I didn't note it, but, uh, yeah, he didn't have any fingers missing. Oh, wrong button. Uh, yeah, I checked everything. That's probably not important. It looks a like cork. But, yeah, definitely no fingers missing. I thought originally that this finger was missing, but uh, it's just bent towards us. Let's check the scratches on his chest. And lovely face. His chest has been lacerated, I would say, with a very sharp and fine blade. Hmm, could be. <laughs> what else? Yeah, definitely face, but anything over here? Nope. Let's check. You can see by his expression that he suffered terribly. His mouth is covered in blood, and I can make out strips of skin between his teeth. My dear friend, everything points to this man having gnawed at his own forearms. That's unbelievable, Holmes. Oh, okay. I didn't have my mic on. What else? What else? Uh, nothing. Oh. Nope. So... What they done to this poor bastard? So have I checked the whole corpse? Nope. It seems like I have checked everything. Anything over here? No. Nope. Back. Something is missing here. Oh yes? And what might that be? His shoes. Watson, his shoes are missing. 
Okay. Shoes are missing. Why? Whiskey. A bottle of whiskey. I can make out fingerprints stained with blood and dirt. Mmm, whiskey. And, um, there's something over a there. A broken bottle of whiskey. However, the Bishop of Knightsbridge was known for his sobriety. It would seem that the brutes who tortured the bishop to death were intoxicated with alcohol. Maybe. Or they forced, forced him to drink or something like that. Oh my, no, it just... No, no, no. Stop. Hmm. What is that? There is blood on this paperweight. This paperweight was used to crush the victim's fingers. Nice. Very nice. What else? Uh, hmm. You definitely upgrade from the Jack the Ripper, although I do enjoy Jack the Ripper uh, uh, graphics, but yeah, it's uh, definitely upgrade. But uh, interesting to see how huge areas we have. Mm, organs, uh, apparently. Brindley and Foster. Mm. Baby Jesus. Mary. Okay. What was that? A surgical scalpel covered in blood. There isn't any doubt. The wounds on the bishop were administered with this scalpel. So good to know. Uh, do I want to leave? There's a, a tumbler. A broken file oh, and file. blood near the neck. What a strange smell. Whew. Chemical components, I think. Broken flask, okay. Uh, there is a portrait. The picture of Peregrine Maitland. Commander of the Infantry Brigade of Her Majesty's Guards at Waterloo. The Bishop of Knightsbridge has the same name as his ancestor, an illustrious family. Okay, and uh, safe. Which. I need something. Yeah, you definitely need something. Some This is a chair, chessboard, and you stick something in it. Reverend, I'm missing something, an implement with which to open this chest. Could you tell me where to find it? No, go to the devil! What are you afraid of, Reverend? What is inside the chest? I'm not afraid of anything. In fact, I do have the necessary implements, but if I have to give them to anyone, it will be to a representative of the law and no one else. Well, he's a jolly bastard. Uh, oh, there is something over there. Oh, right, these are the... A whip? No, it is a discipline for self-flagellation. That's the word, self-flagellation. I love that word. It's a silice designed to bruise the person wearing it. The bishop wore it as repentance. This very pious man must have had the habit of mortifying his flesh as a means of repentance. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Yes, it is actually, yes, mortified place. This so. metal rod is for fastening the chilies. Apparently we need it. Fortunately, I noticed it. For me, it's quite dark. Hopefully it's not too dark for you guys. Um, so what else? Those looks definitely interesting. Um... This door has not been forced. Where does it lead, Reverend? To His Excellency's room. There is just a mattress and a stool. Okay. I'll check if there's a door. I don't want to go there. I'm guessing he doesn't want to talk to me. Have I checked everything from here? Well, we can't interact with that, so let's go here. Well, very humble abode. T 
think about it when you're sitting there reading a book and somebody rushes in and slams that door on your face the bishop's bedroom it is very austere nothing in particular here no and <clears throat> excuse me and can't see anything over here either what is this closed the veranda door hasn't been forced strange reverend might i have the key no you have no authority here let me call the police perhaps we should listen to him holmes perhaps you should let me get on with this watson okay um Do I use something? Closed. Well, probably not matches. What about Closed. this? Closed. Closed. Hmm. Oh. Has that always been interactive? This I don't know. stove is filled to overflowing. Why? What am I missing? You Let's... have no right to search here. Apparently you don't want... What was that? Oh, moonshine is a brighter thing. You must help create the... Okay, yeah, fine. I feel called out. Uh... What am I missing? Can I talk what to you? What do you think, Holmes? Okay, you're not helpful at all. Uh, I need something to open this, and I don't have anything. Oh! These traces reveal that the thieves tried to open this chest. So they definitely wanted to go inside. Uh. So. There is something on... Probably nothing then. that again watch where you're putting your feet Watson have you noticed these prints upon the ground well yes those muddy marks see here Watson footprints can often provide more vital information than the very best of informants yes if you know how to make them talk that is it's child's play Watson we will begin by excluding the contaminating prints which are yours and mine from where we came in and those of our dear Reverend who was so impatient to call the police Okay, question one, question two, what? Answer, answer. Let's start with the sizes. Size nine. Okay. Size nine. Size nine and a half. Right. Size nine. We have a few size nines. Size nine and a half. Nine and a half. Size nine. Okay. Uh... This print came from an expensive pair of shoes, and it seems recent. It is not a laborer's shoe. This print came from... A... Okay. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. A fragment of stone. Peculiar. Hmm. Yes, it Hobnail is. boots like those worn by laborers. Hobnail boots like those worn by laborers. Anything else? Hobnail. Any nails missing? I. Hobnail. Don't think so. Nothing of interest here. 
Is that something? Hobnail. No. This print came. So we have definitely one shoe that is very expensive, and is this hobnail also? Well-worn shoes with an odd pattern on the soles. Oh, those well are different. So we have hobnails, we have expensive labor boots, expensive boots, and well-worn. Uh, well -worn. Hmm. Ooh. Well, basically, uh, have we already uh, removed the our uh, footprints? Because there are three different footprints: hobnails, expensive, and well-worn. So I'll go with the three. I'm guessing we are not seeing Watson's mine or the reverence. Perfect. We now know that there were three crooks. Okay. So this comes in, goes out. This comes in, this goes out. Wait. What do the footprints reveal? One man joined those who were already in the room. One man left the room wearing different shoes. Oh, that is possibility. One man was carried so as not to leave footprints all men left the room jumping on one what but there are missing shoes but then the first question would be incorrect one man joined of the well to be honest you really can't say anything about this one goes well, Hobnob goes in and goes out. Worn Shoes goes in, Fancy goes out. So would that go with different shoes? Strange but true. One of the crooks was wearing a different pair of shoes when he left here. Therefore, we have three men who came in oh. and left again, but one of them was wearing a different pair of shoes from the ones which he came in with. So, all we have to do is look for a workman who likes Italian shoes. Okay. Ah, what now? Okay, let's go with the... What do we have here? Deduction of Knight's Bridge. Um, lack. The bishop's shoes are missing. Shoes. One of the murders left in different shoes. One of the murders is member of the clergy. One of the murders left wearing bishop's shoes. The murders through bishop's shoes. I think wearing. And um, one of the murders. What? The murders are poor. Or one of the murders came back for his suit. Murders are poor. Mm, veranda. The veranda wasn't searched. The bishop didn't own anything of value, not even in his safe. Well, we do not know about that. The murders were looking for something specific. The murders got the wrong person. A bishop took the murders by surprise. Ah, that could be either this or something specific. And so, what would it be? I don't think they got the wrong person. Hmm. I would go with this something specific. The bishop's murders were hired by someone. The murderer searched for the bishop's shoes. The murderers wanted to steal from bishop. I would say hired. Oh! 
I guess I got it wrong. Oh, right, right, right. I forgot totally from the shoes. There was different sizes. Different sizes also. Chest. The murderers were unable to open the safe. That is true. Torture. The victim was savagely tortured. That is also true. Penitence. The bishop was mortifying himself. He was used to pain. Resisted torture. Punished himself too severely. The bishop couldn't stand being tortured. Um, I guess resisted torture. The murderers came here to kill the bishop. The bishop murderers got what they wanted. The bishop murderers didn't get what they want. Well, they didn't. Because they couldn't open the safe. Perfect. It is evident that the Bishop of Knightsbridge's killers were after something specific, and that they did not find it. Reverend, I shall ask you one more time. Open the chest. The item they were seeking must still be inside. It is unlikely that they will let this matter rest. They will most certainly return to finish what they started. And I'm telling you once more, the chest is locked and shall remain so. Very well. We have reached an impasse. You are a stubborn man, Reverend. Watson, accompany our friend to the police station and return with Inspector Baines. Baines and no one else. I shall wait for you here. Go. Alone at last. Now I can continue my investigation. Okay, let's make a save. Apparently it does make auto save, so let's save here, yes. <clears throat> Um, what do I do with this? This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. Okay, apparently we are lock picking. Are we using this, this one? This lock should be easy to pick. Let's see. Okay, yes, we are. Uh... Okay, so am I... So this is how the tumblers are. What does this do? Oh, so I have to. OK, so basically what I do need to do one down. Two up. One up. Uh, let's check. There we are. It is simplicity itself. Hey, this was quite easy. There isn't anything much in this room. It must be used as a reading or meditation room. Okay, there's some... An ink is... stain, quite fresh. This stain is just on the edge of the rug. Let's see. There is nothing on the floor. Yet the ink must have soaked through the rug. Okay. What do we... There is nothing on the floor. Yet. So, what's we think then? Oh, an ink stain. Oh, the rock is turned around. An ink stain. This inkwell was tipped over recently. The ink stain on the floor comes from the ink on the rug, but they are not in the same place. Someone has moved the rug recently. Yes. Why? Oh. That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. Certain stones have been marked out, just like a chessboard. Yes, there's a green. That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. Certain stones have been marked out, just like a chessboard. I need something. Okay, what do we need? What do I need? Uh, what do I have in inventory? Uh, what? Stone fragment. Uh, can I use stone fragment? That is curious. There is something strange on the floor. Certain stones have been marked out, just like a chessboard. I need something. Okay. 
I have to go and... I would like to get this done before I end this episode. Anything of interest? Do I need... Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about that, Bishop. Um... What am I missing? Oh! It is impossible to get out. Okay, it's impossible. Obviously, it's quite small. Um, do I need to go outside? Alone at last. Nope. Now I can continue my investigation. So something... I need something, but what that something is... Okay, so there's something around here. Apparently, someone wanted to hide this statue. Okay, let's. It's... This horse resembles a large chess piece. It does. There is a message underneath this statue. Let's see. What a lack of imagination. Use your passion for chess, the last square on which the knight will place himself after having covered all the others will be the right one. I love you. Well, thank you. But I... St this message was written by a woman, but for whom was it intended? Interesting, this chess game. Okay. So... What am I supposed to do now? Do I... Okay... I have a... Interesting feeling about this. I remember having similar... Puzzle in Gabrionite 3. What am I supposed to do? Horse moves here. I'm guessing it needs... Okay, so it colors these. Um, I can move here, here, or here. If I move here... Mm, I don't know. Probably I will fail this now. Oh no. If I put it here, I can't move. I can... Yeah, I failed this uh, most likely. And That's yeah. not right. Start yeah. again. Um... Hmm, but I s hmm. Oh, I have to go there then. Okay. That's not right. Start again. This could take for a while. Um, what if I go like this? Then... I don't know. Let's try with... Okay, this looks interesting. At least I can move. Do I want to go here? Here? 
here. If I fail this now, I'll probably check this. Oh. <laughs> oh no, did I just... Oh. <laughs> okay, I got lucky there. Uh. This last piece should be the good one. It will have to be pulled free. I need something. Uh, what do I have? Knife. 24th April, my love, what a beautiful spring, and what a marvelous day, our dear youngest child's birthday. Every moment is so precious as our child blossoms, and, without a doubt, he will soon be talking. I am sure that his first words will be for you. He misses you so much as I, as do I. Are you sure you cannot get away Sunday after Vespers? I thought that 14... I thought that. Okay. 14th September, my darling... I know that you think I am insistent, but we absolutely must legitimize our union. We cannot live in sin all our lives. 3rd March. Rest assured, my dear, that I understand your position is not easy. But have you thought about ours, the children's and mine? And I cannot allow our children's future to be compromised. Think about it, my love. What is so-called scandal next to the well-being of your family? We must become husband and wife legally. To f finally form a real fam. Fam. Okay. A packet of letters addressed to the Reverend. They were written by a woman who mentions his illegitimate children. Their affair isn't official. Perfect. I have you now, my wayward Reverend. Yeah, too happy for yourself. Oh. What now? Oh, oh. oh, sorry about that. My, I think uh, I don't suppose I'm allergic, but might be something like that. Okay. Yeah, my nose is just quite a lot. Ah, Watson, you were gone a terribly long time, and Inspector Baines isn't with you. I'm afraid not, Holmes. We were unable to find him. Dr. Watson would not allow me to contact any inspector other than this Baines. What manners! I am a man of the church! My dear Reverend, I notice that you are a chess lover. I trust you will excuse me, but I am never able to resist the appeal of a half-finished game. You are an expert at chess. Very well, then. What do you want now? As you might have guessed, resolving your small chess problem has allowed me to discover some very interesting letters. Letters? What do they say? Reverend, why hide these letters here and run the risk of the bishop finding them? Holmes, what's in the letters? Not now, Watson. Where else could I have hidden them? My own chambers are too austere. They could offer no cover. I knew, however, that His Excellency, may he rest in peace, would not notice my game. The contents of the Bishop of Knightsbridge's chest interest me greatly. Give me the elements you hold, Reverend. Out of the question. Okay, interesting. I can't use corruption, blackmail, or threat. I'll go with the blackmail. At least I have something to back it up with. I am a gentleman. And it would distress me to be obliged to pass this correspondence across to your superiors. Holmes, I know that the end justifies the means, but allow me to express some reservations about how you are proceeding. You say you're a gentleman, but I hear nothing but the words of a blackmailer. The stems that you are looking for are scattered about this room. Manage by yourself. Okay, let's make a save. I'll try to... I'll... Not even trying, but I'll definitely try to get this room done. I think I saw a few here. I don't know how many we need. Okay, uh, back. Uh, no. But I'm almost certain that one is here. Which is weird. So we have... Oh, four. Where else these could be? Mm. 
be some in here. <clears throat> oh. Again, I don't know how many I have to find. I Okay, what is that? You have one. Evidently, as I always do. What are you able to tell us about the Bishop of Knightsbridge's last days? Did anyone come to visit him? Did he seem worried, anxious? Do not omit the smallest detail. His nephew came to see him yesterday at His Excellency's request. I found this visit a little peculiar because the young man rarely visits his uncle. Do you know why that might be? Were they on bad terms? I don't think so. It's rather a consequence of his work. The young man is employed within the archive section of the Royal Library which doesn't leave him with a lot of free time. Do you know the reason for his summons? No, but the conversation was very heated. It only lasted for a few minutes and ended with the nephew in a terrible rage. Interesting. I've answered your questions. Will you now let me contact the authorities? I'm afraid not, Reverend. Not just yet. All right, now we can open the safe. Okay, good, good, good. So... <sighs> oh. What are we supposed to do now? Impossible to open it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna check what the home says if I stick these. Wait a minute. How does this work? Okay, if I put here... Okay, now I have two. So they cannot be next to each other. So if I put this back here, it removes one. So... And not on the same... Okay, I'm... Wait a minute. Okay, they cannot be diagonally either. So they can be like this. Um, here... Oh, no, no, no. Okay, and I need to put one. Mm. Did I fail it? If I put here, no, no, no. Now I can open the chest. That was weird here we are i am eager to discover what remarkable treasure could justify such an act of barbarity extraordinary this chest is impenetrable how is it possible no one other than the bishop should be able to open it you open the chest with disconcerting ease holmes i've seen and heard quite enough this time you won't stop me catch him watson what the but why Run, Watson! Hurry! <laughs> he 
he's escaped. I hope that your motivations are founded, Holmes. I don't much like skirting around the edges of the law like this. It is annoying. Let's leave without delay. What have you found in the chest, Holmes? What in there is so precious for these men to commit such terrible acts? The Reverend was telling the truth. Nothing important was locked inside the chest, apart from a few religious items which are hardly worth stealing. So, we haven't made any headway. Perhaps the police will. By the time the police arrive, we shall be a long way from here, Watson. We are leaving. Okay. This is getting weird. What did we get from the safe? Did we take something or did we not? Why did uh, Holmes send Watson running after that guy? Honestly, I have no idea. But apparently we need to leave. And back to 20... 20, 221 Baker Street of 2021. We have crossed London at a breakneck speed. We could have knocked someone over. And naturally, I had to pay the cabbie out of my own pocket. Watson, stop complaining. We have to analyze the clues found at the bishop's house. Okay, okay. That is for the next time. I'm, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. I have no idea what is happening at the moment. But yes, next time we will analyze the clues and start getting into this mystery. Do the pearls come into it at, it, at all? Is the a royal family boy connected to this? Or are those only red herrings or whatnot? And... Yeah, honestly, I have no recollection for now, at least. I do remember bits and pieces here and there about the areas, but not about the story. But we will uncover it sooner or later. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next time. Until then, goodbye.